Our skin color was beaten into us as nothing but pure evil. We were to be ashamed of it. We were illegitimate. Our mothers were whores. Our fathers were savages. And we had to, and we had to pay for those sins. Do you know anything at all about your parents? Basically, no. It would be easier to break through CIA, KGB files than to get through information on my background. <laughs> From I was a little girl, I knew I was black. At the age of four and a half, I knew what the word nigger meant. They just don't see your Irish side. Listen to me, I'm speaking with a Dublin accent. Countless children in Ireland suffered abuse in institutions run by the Irish Catholic Church. But this is the story of the illegitimate children born to Irish mothers and African fathers in the 50s and 60s. The abuse and racist treatment of these children has never been acknowledged by the Irish Catholic Church or the Irish state. And the secrets of their identities remain hidden. We didn't look like a community, but we are a community. You know, we are there, you know, we are in Ireland. You know, we are experiencing racism. People discovered they had their mother only died a year ago and they've been 40 years searching and given the impression did no parents, unbelievable uh, miscarriage of justice. And nobody seems to accept responsibility for this. The state just devolved all powers around education and childcare and health to the religious. The state didn't want to know. The nuns and priests had complete control. They were like gods. Mixed-race, illegitimate children were very rarely put up for adoption. The majority were placed into industrial schools. These are institutions run by the Irish Catholic Church to care for children. They used euphemisms like convents or orphanages. They were industrial schools, they were like workhouses. The last thing that they had in these places was love, care, attention or the welfare of a child. When you've been in an institution for 18 years and you've been called nigger, wog, gollywog, beaten, stripped, sexually abused, you know why you're there. You know you're there because your mother didn't want to, to look after you. I never met my father. I was never interested in meeting my mother, if I'm really honest. Rosemary has spent her adult life trying to trace records of her father, but it's almost impossible to find anything because all information about him has been redacted by the Irish state. At three, I was sent to these, this dreadful couple. I've got a letter somewhere. This is where she says that we are rotting her beds. I'm not keeping them any longer. Any longer. Yeah, we are filthy, dirty, we're, we're three years old. Rosemary now lives in London and has decided to travel back to Ireland in an attempt to search for information about her father. This is the first time in 40 years that she will go back to St Joseph's Industrial School in Kilkenny, where she was abused as a child. From day one, I was picked on. The daily micro humiliation designed to keep you in your place, because you're not one of us. You need to be grateful you're even here. You're not as good as the rest of them, because they're white. They're white. Scrubbing the color off my skin. Not being allowed to have a bath first. The water will get dirty. That's what Kilkenny means to me. But it also means meeting my son's father. Meeting a man who gave me love for the first time. This is it. This is it. My God, that's it. I thought they'd torn it down or something. 
The word must have got out that there was a black girl coming. All these girls were standing there just looking at me and I'm looking at them and I don't know what the hell is going on. They used to take photographs of us here. Somewhere in an archive are school photographs and my little black face is peeking out. This was the and nuns the bit, and buildings. we were in the grey buildings, yeah. We were in those nasty buildings. What an ugly fucking building. No wonder I was clinically depressed for the ten years I was here. Ugh. Oh. This, this, these are the playing fields. This was the production site of the industrial school. But I also remember being left in the chicken coop. That was a common punishment. You'd be taken out to play, and the older girls would have responsibility for you. But that's when they would take turns sexually abusing you as well. They'd say, I'm going to take you to the toilet because you need to go to the wee. You need to go for a wee. So they'd take you into the toilets and do what the fuck they like with you. And the nuns didn't say anything because they had completely insulated themselves, wrapped themselves in luxury. Rape and sexual abuse were endemic in industrial schools and orphanages run by the Irish Catholic Church. Whilst the sexual abuse of children at St Joseph's Industrial School was documented in the Ryan Report, the ill treatment of mixed race children has never been acknowledged. It feels incre I feel incredibly removed from it. I, 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 I don't even know if I have any emotion about it. I mean, memories of this place just make me feel dead inside. When Rosemary was 16, she became pregnant and had to leave St Joseph's. Her son was put into a church-run mother and baby home and Rosemary was fostered by Brian and Mary, who welcomed her into their family. Rosemary came to us when she was just turned 17, and because Rosemary had just had a baby, the nuns and the whole of Irish society believed that there was no way she could either go back to school or go back to the orphanage where she had been. <laughs> That's my, my first novel. This is the American edition. That's what I would have looked like exactly when she came. That was that same year. The reason the nuns had rung my wife and asked me would they take Rosemary was because we had adopted a, a little girl sometime before that. My wife stood outside the Winds Hotel in, in Dublin. The Winds Hotel was where the priests and the nuns used to come to have their afternoon tea. And a young nun drove up, skidded to a stop, dumped this creature which went on the street and said thanks very much and drove off. That's how she came into our lives one week after she had turned her 17th birthday and a week or two after she had had the baby taken. How was she when she arrived? Uh, she had an air of bravado. I think my wife found her quite exciting and a bit adventurous because my wife was a, wasn't exactly the adventurous type. She was very kind and very generous. Physically, she wasn't in good shape. And I realized that she, in fact, was emaciated. And she never talked about her experiences? When she got to trust us, she began to talk. I asked her, would she write it down? The most important part was that she was being treated as a sex object even within the orphanage. But no way I could have used that in, in, Ireland, in the Ireland of the 70s because there was nobody would listen to me, nobody would believe me. And even today, it's, um, it's hard to say it. These mixed-race Irish children were not considered by the church and the state to be appropriate candidates for adoption. Their stories of racial discrimination, physical abuse and mental abuse are truly shocking. Anne Ferris is a former member of the Irish Parliament. She was adopted herself and has spent her career campaigning for a bill that gives adopted children access to their family records. Do you think there was a different policy to deal with children of mixed race? I don't know. I really don't know whether there was a, a policy, you know, say a state policy or a religious policy, you know, coming from on high. But certainly listening to the stories, there was a policy in the various institu institutions or orphanages that the mixed race people were in.
In Northern Ireland, if you're adopted, you can go and get your records. In England, you can get your records. Here, we cannot get our records. You can't get them. And that's wrong. Of course, it's, it's an abuse of a person's human rights. Jude, who is now in his 70s, has been searching for the identity of his parents for over 50 years. All I know is that my father was from Trinidad. Now, I still don't know whether that's the truth or not. And mother was from Carlo. Slowly, as you move on in life, you realise that some of it, it might be deliberately kept from you. I realise something is not right here. There seems to be a barrier that you cannot break through. And you wonder why is that, you know? Denise moved to London in her early 20s after both of her adoptive parents died. She has also been searching for many years for more information about the identity of her father. If you're born to an Irish mother and there's nothing there that leads you to your father, you either have to create one or be messed up without it because you haven't got it there to, you know. One of the reasons that I've never really fitted in because I'm not white and Irish, but I have Irish sensibilities that have stood to me in this country, you know. So I, all in all, I think I've fared well. I balance my, my two identities I know where I come from. I know where my history comes from. But I'm not going to let it hold me back. Rosemary believes she knows her father's name and that he once studied medicine in Dublin. But beyond this, she has very little information to go on. I've spent years trying to track this name down. It's like the name doesn't exist. So, I have, I must admit, as I've gotten on, I thought, maybe the name I think I have isn't even my name. This is the magic room. I'm so nervous. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Oh. So, um, this is the register of Apothecaries Hall, and it, yeah, it lists the people as they sit their examinations, so he's here. So that's him. Yeah. Um, the address is given us, I think, the Gold, Gold Coast. Coast is Ghana. Yeah. yeah. That's his name. Now, it says here that he's a graduate of Paris University. So he was already a GP by the time he got here. 498. Yeah. That's Student just... 498. There he is. It's impossible for me to take a photo of. I, I thought nigger and savage was my pet names. I actually thought it was my pet name. You know, always come here and always call a savage. Your father was a savage, he was a cannibal, he was this, he was that. And I got this every single day, day and night, there was no exception. So, you know, I'm just looking at this and it's like, it's like, fuck you all. There we go. The skin here, was considered a disability. Therefore, I was defected by reason of my father's ancestry. My father, who was, I now can prove, was a physician. You know, it's like, fuck him. Travel the globe, and everywhere you go, you claim it as your own.